I'm Larry Anglosano at Aviation Consumer Magazine with AirVenture 2017 coverage. Both TrueTrack and Trio have been racing to bring TSO versions of their experimental autopilots to AirVenture 2017. And nearly a week before the show even starts, Garmin announced not one, but two new retrofit autopilots, the budget-based GFC 500 and higher-end GFC 600. We flew both of them at Garmin's Flight Ops in Olathe, Kansas. Here's a summary. The entry-level GFC 500 is priced at $69.95 and comes from Garmin's experimental avionics line. The interface is built around Garmin's G5 electronic flight instrument, which provides pitch, roll, and heading data. Plus, it has on-screen autopilot mode enunciation. It's also used for pilot input of altitude pre-select, heading command, vertical speed, target airspeed, and flight director command bars. The autopilot mode controller can be mounted in a radio stack and has a control wheel for pitch, airspeed, and vertical speed command. There's also envelope protection with a level button that returns the aircraft to straight and level flight if it gets away. The GFC 500 servos use brushless DC motors and gear trains that eliminate the need for a mechanical slip clutch. That can save installation effort and complexity. There's an option for automatic pitch trim, which requires an additional trim servo, but for lighter airframes like the Cessna Skyhawk we flew, the standard trim prompting can save some money if you do some of the work. When it's out of trim, spin the aircraft trim wheel just as you do when hand flying. The GFC 500 has approach coupling, including raw nav and GPSL nav glide slope capturing, but an optional nav interface adapter might be required to interface the G500 and autopilot with select Garmin GPS or VHF radios. Now you likely want the capability because the automation is far more advanced than other dated entry level systems. There's a go around button that commands the flight director to display the appropriate pitch attitude required for a missed approach procedure and it also activates the loaded missed approach when paired with a GTN navigator. Now, Garmin says the initial STC for the GFC 500 is expected to be completed on the Cessna 172 in the fourth quarter of 2017, and STC approval for the Cessna 182 and Piper PA-28 will follow. Total system price, including the G5 flight instrument, will be less than $10,000 before installation. The GFC 600 autopilot, which starts at around $20,000, is a ground-up fresh design that meets FAA TSO standards, and it's aimed at high-performance piston singles, twins, and turboprops. We flew the GFC 600 in a Beach A36 Bonanza, where Garmin recently earned its first STC, as well as on the Beach Baron. Now, while the GFC 600 is designed as a standalone system with built-in pitch and roll sensors, it can interface with Garmin's G500 and 600 PFD MFD and Aspen's Evolution PFD, plus a variety of GPS navigators and VHF nav radios. That's the optional autopilot mode enunciator you see there above the PFD, and it puts the autopilot's selected modes in the pilot's primary field of view. It's also the same footprint of some legacy autopilot mode enunciators. We found that it's plenty bright when splashed with sun and has a wide viewing angle. The GFC 600 May controller can mount in the radio stack, has backlit keys and a sunlight readable display for autopilot mode status and selection. A built-in control wheel also provides adjustment of aircraft pitch, airspeed and vertical speed modes, and like all Garmin autopilots, there's a dedicated level button. The GFC 600 is a 3-axis system with the optional yaw damper and it uses environmentally hardened servos that Garmin says are designed for harsh operating conditions. These have brushless DC motors and, just like the ones used in the GFC 500, have a gear train that eliminates the need for mechanical slip clutch. Now, as we would expect, the flagship GFC 600 has full approach coupling, plus flight director command bars, and the go-around automation that activates a loaded missed approach when connected to the GTN 750 and 650 navigators. Garmin's ESP electronic stability protection is also standard with both the GFC 600 and lower end GFC 500 autopilots. Now like it does in Garmin's integrated GFC 700 autopilot, ESP functions independently of the autopilot and works in the background to help avoid inadvertent extreme attitudes and it provides airspeed protection while the pilot is hand flying the aircraft. Exceed predetermined pitch, roll, or airspeed limits, and ESP nudges on the controls to lessen the pitch attitude or bank angle and becomes stronger if things get out of hand. If the system detects it's been activated for an extended period of time, the autopilot engages with the flight director in level mode, and the autopilot levels the aircraft. For intentional maneuvering, ESP can be disabled.
Now, you can read a full report on Garmin's new retrofit autopilots in the upcoming September 2017 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. With Aviation Consumer's coverage of AirVenture 2017 at Oshkosh, I'm Larry Anglisano. Thanks a lot for watching.